I mean, I've got to tell you now, I think in another life I would have been a mountain goat, so it's resonating <laughs> with me. <laughs> well, then I, you're not going to like how this ends up. Oh, no. In today's video, I am joined by the absolutely gorgeous Sabrina Elba. We chat everything from beauty, growing up, her Avril Lavigne phase, and lots of other things that you might not have known about Sabrina. And I'll be doing a really kind of nice gold toner look on her eyes and then complementing it with a lip liner and a beautiful dewy brown lip. So let's go back to the very beginning. What's your first memory of like beauty? Did you, was it your mum, was it your grandma, was it your sisters? Yeah, that. so Somali heritage is so full of all these ancestral traditions that are very like DIY and there's a lot of prep for like premarital prep. Like for instance, you know, henna is a huge part of getting ready for your wedding. Mm -hmm. You sit over this like furnace thing and smoke oud all over your body. You take a turmeric bath. And like my mom would do all these things anytime she had a big event. So I'd watch her go into a room and just like self care with all this stuff. And I loved that. My mom has always been a huge DIY. Most Somali moms are. Mm. Like she was mixing her like dried goat's milk with hustle, with turmeric, wearing face masks all day. Like to the point where we'd go to Costco and she'd still have her face mask on. Tell me about the goat's milk. How does that come into the, I the routine? Don't, I still don't know. I, I think it just made it that as a texture thing for the mask. Yeah. But, but goats are a big thing in Somalia, like goat meat, goat milk. Did you have goats growing up? Was everything kind of very much like sourced on site? So, so, I, so because I was born in Canada, my, but my family was so eager to sort of keep ancestral stuff and yeah. like Somali cultural stuff yeah. very ingrained in our childhoods. Every Eid we'd go like get a goat, it's like there's like a butchering process. I am like so off of them because it is actually kind of a sad story, but <laughs> one of my first visits to Somalia, my grandma, so my dad's mom, gave me a baby goat. So we took it to our hotel and my mom's mom, my other grandma, without me knowing, cooked the goat. Uh-oh. And then and my grandma goes, goes like, for dinner last night. <laughs> yeah, she's like preparing this thing. And I was like, oh, what are you making? And she's like, yeah, the goat. And I'm like, oh, okay, cool. And then they're sitting down later to eat it. And I'm like, oh, you've been working all day on this goat. She's like, yeah, that's why your grandma gave it to you. And I'm like, that's not my goat. <laughs> she's like, that's your goat. I'm like, that's not my goat. And I like, it's one of the only times my mom said I've ever had like a massive temper oh. tantrum. I was so sad and so angry at my grandma. I was like, you murderer. <laughs> Then it was also, and I didn't understand, you know, a, a big gesture for my grandma to have, have given sure. us this baby goat to yeah. eat because, you know, it's a part of the diet. It's a part, it's like, totally. here's something that's really important for us. The goats are expensive. We're going to give it to you. Yeah. I think as you grow up anyway, you come to accept and understand the reasons for things, don't you? And yeah. And I, and it also is the same with beauty. Like, when my mom was off doing all these DIY stuff, I was like, that is not cool. I'm going to Sephora because you have not heard of like Dr. Nose Gross and this is yeah. why you use turmeric. And I had no appreciation for these like traditions that have been passed out for centuries and yeah. you know, with East African women. And people say mom's always right. And now that I've started my own brand and I'm incorporating these amazing ingredients from all sure. over the continent, I'm like, oh my gosh, mom's I always was, right. I was thinking actually when you were, you know, talking about it, I was like, but hold on, because your brand is so natural. Yeah. And I was just saying I'm actually using the micellular water. And I'm a big <laughs> fan of the cleanser and the moisturizer. And as well. it makes me so excited that you love the product. I, like, I, I love it. Yeah, I, you know, we were just talking about it um, before we started filming, just about how um, how it doesn't strip your skin, yeah. and how it, it, you know, even when you're using the um, the cleansers, you 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 cleanse your skin and you still feel hydrated and moisturized. So you're getting this like almost kind of froth from the amino acids, and then the kaolin clay is drawing out all these impurities. But yeah. bustle, the natural ingredient that we highlight in that one, yeah. has amazing antibacterial properties on, in and of its own, and yeah. it's actually used as a natural soap in East Africa. But I love that we've been able to find these natural ingredients that have been like a part of our heritage yeah. and then you know in some way as I was growing up felt a bit like appropriated because they'd be like trendy and whole foods sure. or something and take ownership and then combine them with like super cool science and contemporary science like when have I ever seen like I, and I'm telling my mom now I'm like you should add some oat amino to that DIY <laughs> <laughs> yeah exactly the updated the 2.0 version so when you were growing up did you have any like did you have a goth phase did you have a mean girls phase what was 
I did. I never, I never had a mean girls phase. I was always like probably too nice, but yeah. I definitely had a goth phase. I had the lamest email address. It was like bottled black magic. Say that again. Bottled black magic. <laughs> <laughs> but because my name was Sabrina, yeah, the and there was this, exactly, and I felt like this, I don't know, this connection to be yeah. explore alternative fashion. Wow, <laughs> put it like that. I don't know, but so I, was, Avril Lavigne was this massive influence, and she was to so many people. Like I think people, you know, I'm probably embarrassed to say that, but let's be real. Oh, she for had sure, a massive pull on so many young women, and for it was sure. like the DC shoes and dying bits of my hair. That's and so funny. Sorry, this is like. Just this is probably the, the, <laughs> like, this is like should be like a squid game. I sometimes think I'm talk like while talking while doing an eye an, an eyeliner and trying to remember what she says. I'm like, would I pass the squid game or would I die at the end of this? And then you modelled as well and you act. Right. So how did that come about? Were you did like friends say, oh, you should you're like the most gorgeous girl we've ever seen. You've got to. Oh, go I up wish for it. my friends That's said that. Said. My friends are here. Nobody said this to me. No. <laughs> um, it was this lady in the mall that mm. was like. We're doing this pageant for Miss Vancouver. At the time, the only thing I knew about them, and this is going to sound so corny, but they were raising money for the children's hospital. And yeah. my younger sister at that time was in and out of the children's hospital all the time. Right. I told my mom about it. She's like, you should enter, you should do it. Yeah. I never thought I'd like win. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was fun. But I fell into kind of the fashion world um, post so I always loved fashion, but for me, it was like, my vans, my crop tops. I had my phases. There was a point in time where I was a super girly girl, but I think, and I'm blaming this on the fact that I'm a Gemini, mm -hmm. that I just love everything. Mm -hmm. And I'll try everything, and I never want to say that I'm like, uh, one thing. Sure. How do you kind of juggle your time then? Like what would a typical day look like for you? And and also break down like the beauty routine as well. So you wake up in the morning, what happens? I'm a really good night routine person, but in the morning I am a micellar water, which is one of the reasons I want to definitely have one for the brand. Yeah. Because I'm usually just like taking a night mask off with my micellar and then so I do. So do you do you do like a you do like a full mask situation most evenings, do you? Yeah, I love sleeping with something that's like a humectant, something quite yeah. slippery or thick. Like if it's usually our moisturizer doubled with a couple serums or yeah. it's, and we're developing a serum, so I'm loving that texture at the moment because I love the slugging mentality. Mm -hmm. I just don't like slugs or, or snails. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like, so when you're in bed, are you just like, don't touch me, I'm slugging. Oh, <laughs> and I he's not allowed so, to. <laughs> I know, I genuinely feel bad. And it's also the waiting, do you yeah, know what I mean? Like yeah. he's like, are you coming to bed? Yeah, I know. <laughs> like, yeah this is my routine, give me a I minute. always find that I have to be like, look, I'm sorry that I probably smell really funny right now. I always <laughs> smell really funny. <laughs> What's been something growing up that you felt was a challenge, you know? Growing pains. Yeah, I'm not sure if this is as related, but mm -hmm. I used to hate being tall. I hated it because tall people attract short friends. I don't know, like all, all my best <laughs> friends. Is that a true thing? <laughs> yeah. She's like, excuse me? <laughs> all my friends are teeny tiny. Okay. And I remember, and I was also like the tallest girl in my class. Yeah. And, like, and I never wore heels, yeah. like ever. And then at one point I was just like, you know what? I'm gonna embrace this. F it. Yeah. So I started yeah. wearing heels and I'm so thankful that I just like embraced that side of myself. For sure. I also used to have like all my exes were pretty much my height or shorter. So oh, you also right. attract short guys. Short guys look up at tall women like we're like Christmas trees. I don't and know. And once you embraced it, you found a man that was taller than you. So that's how right? it goes. Is guys. there a, um, a beauty routine happening on the other side of the apartment? <laughs> Uh, yeah, definitely. Like sink, actually. Now there is. Yeah. It used to be stealing my things in a egregious amount. Like I like, why is all of the La Mer bottle gone? Because it was using it on a speed. I feel like <laughs> it's actually something very similar happened to me. I had a, a lovely builder working with me for a number of months, <laughs> and um, I went to um, pick up a really expensive, like thick kind of face mask, and it was empty. And I was like, and he was like, oh sorry, I've just been, uh, I just my hands have been quite dry recently and I was just like <sighs> that is so funny but this, th there's no understanding no, of value no concept no of like concept like do you understand how much <gasps> this costs but then also some of those sort of like the education that Idris developed around the brand was actually life-changing for me I was using 
I kid you not, like maybe like 10, nine products mm. at one time. And yeah. I was damaging my skin barrier and it took me forever. And it was just like this, mm. it became stressful. Sure. Whereas when we were developing the brand, it just was like three things max, that's it. And yeah. also understanding that like, you know, cost of goods is essentially the same for skincare, like cost of ingredients, right? Sure. Like you're paying a lot of times for packaging and sure. you know, campaigns and things like that. And that's fine if you do want that, but we felt like, we had a responsibility to put out mm. products that were for melanated skin that didn't break the bank or sit in like a bargain aisle. So yeah. more in that like mastige market. And that's like revolutionized the way now that I shop for skincare for or like formulate. Well. Yeah. yeah. When did you launch your brand? How did it like, how did it come about? Cause I mean, obviously I've had a, my own brand journey and I know how exhausting stressful. and stressful <laughs> and we've already <laughs> talked about it. and. So how it was an education yeah for sure I mean I didn't know enough about skincare right and I had a lot of time during COVID to self-educate a lot so was it during COVID that did you did you feel like your relationship with your own skin and your own beauty routine changed in COVID because mine definitely did I suddenly yeah. realized I had one and I enjoyed it and I think for most people it was that revelation yeah. of do I or do I not have one yeah. right and for me, it was this journey that we embarked on in the wellness world because we both had COVID, yeah. you know? And when you're African, your family is like, you're gonna die if you don't build your immune system. Yeah. Drink like this herbal tonic and this and that. And it was all this like wellness stuff that was being thrown at us. So we're like discovering this world, but realizing that like maybe we didn't really fit into that world. Mm. And especially all the products that I was buying you know, I'm like of a generation where I was using products that weren't marketed to me, like Clarisol, Neutrogena, sure. stuff that's like stripping my yeah, skin barrier, yeah. not focusing on melanated skin. Yeah. Because actually, and this is part of the discovery, the great thing about having melanated skin is it's just bougier skin. It's drier, <laughs> we need higher quality ingredients, you know. And, and it's very stressful as well when you're dealing with like skin issues and there's like, you feel like there's nothing for you or you yeah. don't know where to look. Did yeah. you just use the hyaluronic? I did yeah. actually. <laughs> I love this product so much. Oh, like, I'm, so and, sweet. Like, you know, we were saying earlier, like this is the product that I was like, what is this? And I DM'd you and I was like, I want this. I love this. But I bought this. And, and you Thank just you. actually quite aptly said that it looks a bit like a nipple. I hadn't even occurred to me, but yeah, it's sort of does. does it's definitely, it? it's, it's a good nip. I didn't think about using it on top of makeup because I've been using it. Yeah. Under. Well, so, um, so it has this, yeah, this triple hyaluronic acid um, complex different weights of hyaluronic acid so you get like very very deep kind of hydration and if it's, it's deeper sort of, penetration it probably. actually yeah it helps to um i find make the makeup kind of almost more elastic that makes oh, sense so if you have like a dry dryish foundation or a tendency to be dry it's great because it kind of almost acts like kind of an, an elastic I that's, love that. That's the way I sort of see it and use it, yeah. It's such a good texture, and that was one of the reasons I loved it as well, because we were at the point where we were like looking at so many different textures, and uh, I was like, this is nice. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Ooh. Tell me about Canada, because I, I did listen to um, a podcast, and you, were, you deeply loved the country, like huh. the geography, you were talking about it, and I was just like, I really love that. I love it. I made myself sound like a proper countryman, like, yeah, uh, no. And you I, live in London I'm, now, and I'm like, I'm sorry, we don't have any of that over here. You, well, yeah, but also nothing can kill you in, in England, which That's is true. kind of where it is. I, you know, come other from neighbor, coyotes. Other and than Uber and drivers, maybe. Bears, and yeah, other than <laughs> <laughs> Trying not to laugh at that. Oh my god, all right, five, four, three, two, one. And then hold on, I have a bit of upper lip sweat. <laughs> I'm so happy that you listened to that because I, I constantly tell people how amazing Vancouver is. Mm. I love Canada and I was actually born east. I was born in Montreal, but we moved out west to Vancouver when I was like 11, mm -hmm. 12 maybe. Mm -hmm. And it's just forever ingrained that like humbling nature of it, the massive trees. You've never seen trees this yeah. big. Like, and then the mountains and the beaches and you know, like talk about like surfing towns and everything. And I'm so excited actually next month or in two months, I get to go and do this like trek up the Great Bear Rainforest. Oh wow. And you get a boat and you can see things like spirit bears and listen to whales. What's a spirit this. bear? So it's, it is, I think, just technically a grizzly bear, but there's, lore around there being like a fully white oh, um, wow. bear. It becomes like this passion. Like I feel like anyone who's come from Vancouver loves nature. And yeah. I think it's part of why I love the conservation work that I do, because I just... So tell me about that. That was actually something I was going to ask you about, and that's quite a good little segue. Part what? of it is obviously that love from hometown, like that glory of nature. But 
also my mom grew in a very grew up in a rural pastoral mm. lifestyle like she herded camel for a very long time like she didn't have shoes till she was seven but because she grew up in that lifestyle she had this passion of it and yeah, for it yeah, and especially yeah. for rural people and how rural people can like you know feed themselves through agriculture and all Absolutely. these practices that were being forgotten by people trying to move to the city yeah. so we started doing a lot of conservation work and initially i did a lot of work around wildlife conservation mm -hmm. which i'm still super passionate about and i work with like this amazing elephant sanctuary in kenya and like tons of great stuff but i realized that people are so much part of that problem. Sure. Like if you have elephants, for instance, coming and destroying yeah. all of your crops yeah. or and killing your family members, yeah. you're not gonna have a relationship with elephants that Absolutely. is. Absolutely. You know, and then you have Westerners coming in being like, we wanna protect the elephants. And they're like thinking, what about protecting us? Yeah. You know, so that, it, that conflict yeah. of interests, really. So that isn't it? passion broadened into people and animals and yeah. understanding the, the situation further because it is so much more complex. Yeah. So what was the look we were going for today? Oh, I, I can't so, wait to see it. Well, do you know what? I have to say, talking and doing makeup <laughs> does pose a slight challenge. So we didn't do any line work, but right. I have gone for, I'll br bring this little palette up. Mm. I've kind of gone for these, uh, these kind of like coppery gold, rose gold. This just gold. looks like candy to me. Like it just <laughs> looks so good. So nice and pleasing to look at. Ah, oh, thank you. I love it. It's just gone for a little light touch of some. I love my lips so and... much too. Oh, great! This is so cool. See, this is why I was so excited too, because this isn't something that I feel confident enough to do myself. Yeah. And that's the fun about working with makeup. Well, it's color as well, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. I look cute. <laughs> I actually wish we were doing this the day of carnival. Oh, you'd love to come back for it. Because I won't. We'll perfect. send you the tutorial. I know. This is so perfect. Oh. I love it so much. Thank you so much for being a wonderful model and conversationalist. No, thank you so much. Thank so. you so much for slaying my face. <laughs>